This video, produced by World Coffee Research, is part of a five-part series supporting the Uganda Coffee Development Authority, Colono Robusta Coffee Nursery Manual, for establishment of coffee nurseries. If the cuttings and their new roots are kept in an environment where they receive the right amount of light and nutrients, they will continue developing roots and shoots, and eventually, the clones will grow into fully developed coffee plants that maintain the same characteristics as their mother plants. Production of clonal plantlets involves the following. 1. Assembling of the right tools and equipment. 2. Construction of propagation beams. 3. Construction of a propagation chamber. 4. Preparation of the rooting medium. 5. Harvesting of the noodle cuttings. 6. Inducing rooting and shooting. 7. Hardening of the plantlets. It is important to maintain good hygiene at all points throughout the process as this will reduce disease and pest infestation, which commonly leads to mortality of the cuttings. Preparing the rooting media correctly is very important, as this will help make sure plantlets develop into vigorous, healthy trees. This media supports rooting, shooting of the cuttings, and ultimately the survival of rooted plantlets. The materials used for rooting media include black forest soil, white lake sand, and sawdust. The substrate needs to be cleaned of foreign materials that may possibly cause diseases or interfere with rooting, sprouting, and growth of plantlets. Disinfection methods include solarization, saving of soil and sand, sterilization, washing, and fumigation. After the rooting media is ready, polypots are filled with already prepared rooting media and aligned in cages or tunnels. Harvesting of suckers is done when the mother bushes have produced mature suckers of pencil thickness. It involves using a pair of sharp pruning shears, also called secateurs, to cut mature suckers from the mother plant collecting and heaping them under a shed in a potting preparation shed. The degree of hardness of the wood has an effect on the duration of rooting. Harvested cuttings will root well from a semi-hard wood tissue which has not hardened because the interior cells are very active and easy to reproduce. Very soft wood roots and hard wood may not root at all. Cuttings should therefore be sorted according to the type of wood. An appropriate rooting hormone should also be used for different kinds of sucker stem hardness. After cuttings are prepared, they should be properly placed in the rooting media to enable formation of colors, initiation of roots, shoots and subsequent growth. The most common placement method is the direct method that involves placing the cutting in a polypot filled with rooting media. Successful rooting of the cuttings requires careful management of the microenvironment. That is, air, temperature, humidity, and light within the cage. Two months after placement of the cuttings, the operator is advised to expose the cuttings and open cages for one to two hours in the morning hours at a two-week interval. This is a culture control measure that prevents growth of fungomycelium that causes leaf coffee leaf spot, a disease which typically results into death of young plantlets. Higher survival rate of cuttings potted has been recorded at nurseries using small polypots. Even if the survival rate is high, Though after three to four months, it is recommended for operators to transfer the rooted cuttings to large pots of size 5 by 8 inches. For further growth, 
prior to distribution to farmers for planting. To learn more about the establishment of clonal coffee nurseries, you can consult the clonal robusta coffee nursery manual from UCDA. Remember, using the correct agriculture practices can help ensure successful rooting of plantlets and a steady production of plantlets for the nursery.